people ask me oftentimes in the comments if you can reuse forms and here I'm just showing that I am reusing an old form and I do this all the time that way I don't have to waste tape or materials I can just reuse them until I cut them down so small that they're unusable so here I'm just ribbing down uh, the width on this form because it's just about what I need but it's a little wide and then I'm going to take it over to the yeah, miter saw we'll just, that's, that's fine there, and, and I'm going to go ahead and just uh, cut that down to length if you have a miter saw that is sliding but it doesn't go all the way through here I'll show you in just a second but all I do is I make a mark I'll cut it as far as it can go and then I'll flip the board over and cut it again you'll see here in just a second And I just use the blade, put it in the blade curve to line it up, and then continue my cut. There we go. And the bottom of the mold is finished. If you want a full how-to, I'll post it in the description. Okay, so now that we have our form finished, which you can see here, we're going to start laying out our burl slabs. Uh, for the coffee table we have three of them and it's going to kind of go in this order here that piece here um, so I'm going to take a pencil and we're going to mark some areas that need to be trimmed here and here and we'll get them all laid out okay So now that I have this laid out into the form, um, I'm going to go ahead and start laying out the other pieces. Now I really don't have a real way that I do this except for I just eyeball it and whatever looks aesthetically pleasing to me, I just set it there on the top of the form and use my pencil to uh, make a couple of marks right on the edge of the form so I know where the edge of the form is. And then I lay a straight edge on top and connect the two marks. When you have a piece uh, that's, you know, super irregular like this, I literally just lay a straight edge over the top and just eyeball the line. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect at all. As long as when it's, as long as it's close, because you can always come back after you pull it out of the form to true up the edges. And you can see it here. It's close, but not perfect. And that's okay. All right, I think we got it set exactly how I want it. This thing looks really cool. Now it's time to just fill it with some epoxy. Okay, so here we're gonna go ahead and mix up three gallons of epoxy. It actually ended up being around four gallons, but if you notice, I pour the hardener in first. This is a two to one mixture. As you notice, the hardener bottle, there's one gallon of it, and then there's two gallons of epoxy. That's a two to one mixture. Two parts epoxy, one part hardener. 
The reason why I start with the hardener is because it's thinner than the epoxy is and it tends to rest on the top on the surface and when you go to mix it sometimes it splashes up. So to keep that from happening I always pour the hardener in first. It's just good practice to get into. And if you notice there's a slight bluish gray tint to the epoxy. Don't have to worry about this. Once you mix up the two parts this tint goes away. This just has to do with the chemicals in it and the uh, everything that makes up and keeps the epoxy clear. Um, that's what gives it that blue tint. They're trying to keep it from ambering over time. So if you notice the drill mixer that I'm using here, it's a long one. This is actually four or five gallon uh, capacity. If you use the one gallon capacity, the drill won't set outside of the bucket and you'll have a hard time mixing. So you want to get the bigger um, mixer. Now here's the pigment, pigment P1630. It's actually called Curacao. It's an island in the Caribbean and it's a really pretty bluish gray. I thought this would be a great pigment to use, especially since it's going to look like some islands in the Caribbean. Not specific ones, just kind of like, you know, a tropical island, you know, from sky view. So it's going to look really pretty. So here I just dump in a little bit of pigment and you always want to put your mixer on top of the pigment first and start mixing before you press it down to the bottom of the bucket. And that just gives you a good mix without it flying up in the air and creating a bunch of small chunks down into the epoxy. And what you'll see me doing here is once I get it mixed, to make sure that it's the opacity that I want, what I'll do is I'll take a mixing cup, and you'll see me here in a second, I'll dip it down into the epoxy to the thickness of the of what my finished table will be just to see how opaque or translucent it is and decide if I want more pigment. But right now we're just going to mix it up. Make sure that when you're mixing your epoxy you scrape the bottom of the bucket and the sides at all times uh, just to make sure that you don't have any unmixed epoxy because that's what's really going to mess you up in the end if you have any unmixed epoxy. Such a pretty silvery blue color. I really like this color. It's one of my favorites. You can always go over to goodviewwoodworks.com to check it out. So here you go with the mixing cup. I'm grabbing it and I'm looking to get about two inches of material. And then I peer in to see how translucent it is. And I noticed I just didn't have enough metallic pigment. And so I wanted to add more. So we'll just add a little bit more. No issue. This is why you always want to add a little bit of, at a time because you can't take it out once it's mixed in, but you can always add more. There we go. I just added just about the same as I added the first time. Makes a really nice silvery blue color. I really like this color. It's actually one of my favorite colors to date. Stop recording. Oh, it looks freaking sick, right? Oh, I missed. <laughs> Good thing that piece is right there. Mm -hmm. I think I need probably another gallon. Yeah, because you're going to lose a lot coming in here. It's all sinking down in there.
So this part right here is probably one of my most favorite parts of the epoxy process, and it's the most satisfying to me, is pulling off the edges of the form. First of all, it makes a really cool sound when it peels away uh, from the epoxy. But also, you get to see kind of ex what your table is going to look like or your project is going to look like. You can peer into the epoxy for the first time. It's really cool. What a pretty table this is going to be. So here I'm going to grab a chisel. I don't normally like using chisels to pull up the slab. Usually I use uh, some wooden wedges, but I didn't have any available and I was actually didn't feel like making any. I just wanted to get it over with. <laughs> so um, I did find some scraps that I ended up using here later on because it was this was really stuck down. Um, I actually had a little bit of, of an issue with heat on this batch. Uh, for some reason it overheated and cured really quickly which caused it to stick down to the tape a little bit more aggressively than normal. No issue, it still released perfectly fine. But I hammered some uh, wooden, down, uh, wooden pieces down in there and it popped right up and it looks super pretty. There we go. We got it. All right, everybody, I hope you liked part one of this epic coffee table build. Um, it has some pretty sweet maple burl and a new color that I haven't used this is the first time using this color. Um, so I hope, hopefully you guys can go and get that color if you like it too, okay? I'll leave everything down in the description, all the links and so forth. Thank you for watching, guys, and as always, thanks for hanging out with us. <laughs>